right guys, Unfrequented World. It's a new day. We've got the uh, Macro Cruiser Multi and the Garrett AT Pro. We're going to go over the field behind me here where I've uh, found a few old coins and there is a nail bed back by that shed which is probably 25 by 20 or something like that and I've never been able to go over that with either of my machines, just too many nails and uh, just couldn't find anything in there. It was a waste of time. We're going to try the cruiser there. Okay, so I had a viewer asking yesterday about discrimination and notch and if you could do individual numbers or if it was groups of five and I'll just show you that as you push the plus or minus buttons it goes up one number at a time. So you can notch out or discriminate to any number you want. So I'm going to set the discrim today up to 40 so it matches the AT Pro. So originally I had planned to walk around this field with the AT Pro, find some good signals, and then compare the two machines. I don't think that's a good idea because I've got 100 hours plus on this field and few signals with the AT Pro are few and far between. So we're going to reverse that. We're going to walk around with the cruiser and when it finds what I deem to be, you know, let's say a 70 or higher signal, We'll compare it to the AT Pro and we'll we'll dig it and see what it is. Settings for the multi cruiser today, we're gonna try three tone, gain is set to 90, ground balanced to 80, and I am uh, discriminating out to 40. Settings for the AT Pro, we are in Pro Zero mode, sensitivity is maxed, and uh, we are ground balanced to 92. And that's about it for settings. Okay, so I've been here for an hour in the field, guys, testing both machines. A little frustrated with myself because I got to tell you, the machines up to nine inches are pretty much the same. They're going to bounce all over on a crappy signal. Um, where there's going to be a difference is the cruiser may unmask something that's hidden out here in the field that the AT can't get to. Anything over nine inches is pretty sketchy with the AT. The cruiser should bang that out as well. So I've been wandering around here trying to find signals for you guys. Both machines show the same sketchy ID. You know, one's a little higher, one's a little more solid, the, the cruiser. But it's still showing it's a multi-metal um, item or that it's a rusty item on both machines. I wouldn't dig these with either machine. So I guess what I have to do is walk the field with the cruiser, find something good that the AT has missed. I've been here the last two times uh, and spent eight hours and found nothing really. So now's the time, I guess this is the test that we need to do. Will the cruiser find some stuff that the AT missed? If I get a good signal, we'll pull out the AT and compare it before I dig it. Other than that, any sketchy signals, I'm not even gonna bother. AT Pro is a solid machine, but the limitations are 10 inches maximum and the masking and the uh, recovery speed is quite a bit slower. So other than that guys, it'll, it'll do everything up to 10 inches that the new machine is going to do. So I'm not knocking the AT Pro in any way and I'm actually keeping my AT Pro. I've talked about this before in other videos but right off of this building here, I'm assuming in the 40s, 50s, 60s there was another building they had and it would have been right here. And this whole area is full of nails that ring up with good signals on the AT Pro. It'll show 80s, you know, low 70s right up to mid 80s, and it's a rusty nail every time. So we're gonna try the cruiser right here to start. This is gonna be my Monty's nail test right here because it's torturous, I know that. I don't have to set anything up. This is real live crap hole conditions right there, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Trying to get it in here right there. It's an electrical cable in this uh, nail bed. So that was ringing up from 70, mid 70s to mid 80s. And I used both machines. It was easier to find on the cruiser. So just sweeping the nail bed, I, I hit it, found it no problem. And then I had to work a little bit knowing that it was there with the AT Pro. I had to keep working it to get that the 80 signal on that machine. So. I can't dig it out, it's probably 15 feet long in the ground, but it's in there. Both machines can find it, I just found it a lot easier with the cruiser. Okay, still in the nail field and uh, found a penny. And both machines found it. They were bouncing around a little bit, uh, mid 70s to 82. Um, both machines were in that 80 range. I think the cruiser was a little higher than that, but it was still in the 80, low 80s. And there was no solid ID on either machine. They both found it very easily. I gotta say that I uh, think I prefer the AT Pro nice little ding kind of sounds to it. 
this uh, cruiser reminds me more of the Bounty Hunter Land Ranger Pro where it's a digitized and I find it a little bit irritating. Luckily we can adjust the tone break and everything on this machine so that the, we can change the sounds. Okay, we've found a signal that uh, is differentiated between the two machines. I was getting just a tiny little blip on the cruiser, so I put it in deep mode, pumped up the gain to 92, and I'm getting a good signal between 70 and 90. It's, it's bouncing around, but it's a definite solid. I'll show you that. Then I grabbed the AT Pro. I got nothing here. I'll show you that as well. Okay, so we'll show you the cruiser anyway. That's a coin, guys. Absolutely. Okay, so those flowers right there that I laid on the ground, that's where the, the item is. Nuts. Not a coin. I was so sure that was going to be a coin. Oh, I gotta say, there's something with the pinpointing on this machine. I've missed two targets. So, is it me? Is it the machine? I'm using the center of the coil like I would on the Bounty Hunter or the Garrett, and I've completely missed uh, by four inches. Two targets. I'm going to look in the book and see what it says about pinpointing with the new cruiser. Ha! Water break, guys. It's freaking hot out. You know, I forgot that there's a lot of excitement that comes with the purchase of a new machine, but there can also be a lot of frustration. I don't know the machine, I don't know the sounds, the buttons are all in a different place, I'm having a hard time pinpointing with it. Um, but I mean, these are all expected things, so I'm not, I'm not super aggravated but it, it's a little you know you want to just get out there and start finding great stuff right away that's not always the case it's a lot of work to break in a new machine guys a lot of work i don't like the pinpointing button on this new machine i mean it works good and everything it's just tiny and it's off to the one side why didn't they stick with the trigger that they had on the uh impact that looked like a great system you push it forward and you're uh, ground balancing the machine and then you're pulling it back to uh, locate targets that Looked like a very good solution. There's no doubt in my mind that the new machine has capabilities that the AT Pro doesn't, but I have to say that the AT Pro will do 90% of what most people want out of a machine, and it's so easy to use compared to the new stuff, even compared to the Bounty Hunter Land Ranger Pro. It's just pick it up, it's dummy proof, put it on one of your pro modes, and away you go. Um, I just wish that the VDI was stronger and that it had more depth. Those are the only two things. So, Garrett, if you could make a new machine that went down 18 inches, 16 inches even, you know, and some super, uh, doesn't have to be the greatest VDI at those depths, but it could hit a target at that depth, then we'd be talking. So I'm definitely going to be keeping the AT Pro because I feel a monkey could use it, any monkey. And by that I mean my brother. He could pick it up, he knows nothing about metal detecting, I could turn it on for him, say, go in this mode and go search. And... When you get a high number, dig it up, and that's a good quality in a machine. Mark the position which provides the loudest signal using a tool or your foot, but it doesn't tell you where on the coil to mark it. I've got a signal that was reading solid 96 on the other machine, on the cruiser, and I am getting nothing. Just the tiniest occasional blip. No VDI, no VD is a good thing I guess. I had switched here to four tone mode and ran the discrimination up to 70, turned the iron sound right off and at 92 gain. solid 96. Well, I put the machine on deep mode and I uh, was getting solid 97s again, but I didn't bother getting the phone out to show you because I know it wouldn't work. So here's what it is, down about 6-7 inches. Pinpointer worked fine that time. I guess the question is, why wasn't the Garrett hitting on that? I mean, it was not a spectacular find, but the Garrett was not hitting on that at all. Hey, attaboy cruiser. <laughs> Solid 78, two inches down, and we got a toonie. This thing's starting to pay for itself. Okay, I wasn't expecting anything. I moved over from the toonie like 10 inches, got a 78 signal, I think it was. I'm not even sure. I just thought I need to start digging everything with this machine. Ah, it's a coin. It's a big coin. <laughs> 
What is it? Oh, 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 yes, it's got some green copper patina on there. Oh, Mr. Reed. I think. Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I did. Ah. You know what? The whole point of this was, I'm sure. I'm sure the AT Pro would have hit on this. I just thought I'm going to start digging all these signals and it's a lot of work to keep switching machines. Check this out. Oh, hello. <laughs> wow. I'm freaking ecstatic, guys. I did it. I, I hit my summer goal. That was the coin I said I wanted to find. I have not found one. 1915 Canada Large Cent. Oh, man, I'm stoked right now. I think I'm a little upset at at is that I messed up my testing. I thought, well, we're just gonna take a break from switching machines. I'm in the middle of the nail bed and I have hit this not too hard before because there's so many nails and things. Uh, I guess the only takeaway is that I hit it with the cruiser and the cruiser is paying off already. So I guess from this point on, I'm gonna put the AT Pro away. I'm just gonna enjoy my day of metal detecting. I'm gonna swing the cruiser for a couple hours, see what I find. I did a little bit of a comparison for you guys, and honestly, like I've said, all the points, the AT is going to hit 90% of what this thing is, up to 10 inches. Beyond that, it is all Cruiserville. Um, that coin there that I just dug, the one cent, was only down uh, 7, maybe 8 inches. So the AT would have hit that, I'm sure of it. Um, but anyway, that's what we're going to do, is just dig with the cruiser for a couple hours. So a little piece of foil here was reading high 70, low 80. Just banging it out, no problem. And uh, we were down seven inches, maybe seven and a half inches in that hole there. So uh, the cruiser definitely picks stuff up. Well, nine inch reading, uh, 72, and there's a cap liner right here in the where I turned this over. So that's not a good sign. <laughs> it's probably some kind of cap in here. Unless that is the cap, and it's just so old and degraded. Okay, so what I'm doing, guys, is running in three-tone mode with uh, 90 gain, and when I get a signal like this... I actually switch... into deep mode... So I can get a better uh, ID on it. Now that was a deep target. Let's take a look here. So we've got nine inches to the orange cap here. So nine inches. And it's a coin. Look right there. Well apparently you never know in this business. Nine inches, a regular penny, 1981. What the hell was it? That was deeper than the 1915 coin I just dug five feet away from that. That's ridiculous. So this batch here guys, that's things that have all tricked the new detector today, ringing up uh, pretty solid in the 90s, all four of those. And I uh, still dug them so it's not it's not uh, like buying this machine is going to be the end all to bad signals that read up as something good. So I'm still in the nail bed and I've been playing with a lot of iffy signals trying to get a little bit deeper and it's frustrating because any machine on the edge of of its detecting field, you know, 9, 10, 11 inches, whatever, even deeper, I'm digging up nails and things like that because it just can't give me an ID. But when it does find a signal, the uh, multi-cruiser just bangs out, I've got a signal here. I've turned the plug over and there's something interesting. I haven't looked closely, but there's something interesting here. It almost looks like it has a star edge on it. Right here. What is that? <laughs> oh. Oh, it's some kind of memorial, 1874 to 1974, and it's a little pendant. Now that is actually pretty cool. It looks like it's got a little pioneer or something on there. Um, I'm going to have to take it home and clean it up. I don't want to scratch it, but that is a medallion of some kind. I have never found anything like that. That is really cool. Really cool.
Trying out the wireless headphones, they work great. You just turn them on and the sound automatically jumps over to them. You don't have to pick or change any settings. Well, I almost gave up on it. Probably about 10 inches down the hole. A solid 72. But look at it, it's intricate. Was this part of the sign here? For the original school or something? I mean, this was a turn of the century school. And uh, to me that looks like it would have been part of some uh, signage or something. I'll see if I can clean that up at home. That's cool, I'm taking that home with me. And the reason I'm guessing signage is because there is the driveway and we're only 20 feet in here off the driveway and that's where I dug it up from. So I was getting third degree uh, sunburn on the back of my neck there so I had to move into the shade. I haven't even been here to finish the first hole. I've got the plug turned over and the black flies are... I, I just... Oh. Mosquitoes too. I can count five mosquitoes right now on my arm. Oh my freaking god! First hole was a penny. There is an old piece of gum. You know how your teachers said that gum would last forever? Well, they were right. Look at that. Still pink in the middle. Well, there's another penny. The strange thing on this one was that uh, I was getting a really solid signal, but the machine was saying pinpointing at 12 inches. Well, it was only down there 4 inches. And I kind of knew it wasn't that deep because the signal was fantastic. 1951 American. This area here is another area that's full of tiny little nails and lots of iron. So I just pulled two pieces out of there, there's another piece in the hole, but I was getting a nice clear signal of another coin, and it's another penny. So I know when I'm digging pennies, I've kind of skipped this area because I dig every penny to show myself next time I go, if I'm finding pennies, I haven't been there. And uh, so this area here, right along the edge in the trees, I haven't done this. That's three pennies in about, uh, well, the last three holes and within five feet of each other. Okay, so these came up in the same handful of dirt, guys. This, whatever it is, was ringing up a solid 96. This never registered at all, and they were pretty much touching in the hole. I thought for sure I had a coin with that being such a solid 96 number, but... Well, the cruiser did it again, guys. We pulled up another coin, and this whole area... I, the phone is... I can't... it's not a great... But under these trees, all in here, it's full of little tiny nails. Uh, I don't know what was here before. They're about an inch long, half an inch long, and all kinds of little bits of iron. And uh, the AT Pro suffered in here before, and I skipped this area as well. And I am hitting coin signals with the cruiser, no problem. I move along two, three feet, all of a sudden, bang. And, uh, you know, it's a coin every time. 1968. Solid 72, an old buckle. I've got to say the sound is way better with these on. I like the tone better and I can differentiate between a garbage sound and when there's something actually there right on the fringe. Um, for example, I just dug this up, a little piece of foil, and it was down there nine inches. And uh, not a great signal. I'm just running in uh, three tone right now, guys. I haven't touched the deep mode uh, since we hit the shady area here. I'm just, just playing with one mode to start with. Top to an old pen. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you. I dug something out from under this root, and this root is massive. It's like probably five inches around. It's, it's huge. It's been here a long time, and we're talking nine inches down in there. And here's what I dug out of the hole. And it's got some kind of design on the back of it. There's a bit better of a look. Like, is it supposed to be a leaf or something? I don't know, but it's something. And on the back, it's got a perfect circle there. What is it? Gotta love it when you get in the car after six hours of metal detecting and the same song is playing as when you got out. All right, guys, that's it. It's two o'clock, it's absolutely boiling. I'm starving, I'm thirsty. I ran out of water like two hours ago. So that's it for today. But I am going to sum up this hunt by showing you the box of the Macro Cruiser one more time because that sums up what this machine did here on this site. I avoided this site the last few times because I said I've pounded it for so long, 100 hours worth on this field, 
and uh, the cruiser pulled out some pretty darn good stuff. There's the box, guys, and it speaks for itself. I agree with that statement 100%. There it is, today's hoard, guys. A few nails and things I got checked on, a spacer, a washer, nails, and a bit of junk that uh, I'm sure was discriminated out, but I just happened to be in the hole with things I dug. And actually found some cool things today. All of these are pretty cool. The medallion, the buckle, the leaf, and I don't know if that's part of a sign or whatever, but, uh, and then, oh, yes, right there, guys. My large scent Canadian 1915. Wow, I'm going to have to pick a new target for the summer because uh, the macro cruiser really hammered that out. And uh, yeah, I hit my goal already. <laughs> wow, guys, did that penny ever turn out fantastic. Just a bit of warm water and a very soft brush and it cleaned right up. It's exactly what I wanted for the collection. Something where you could read the date. It's actually in better shape than I could have hoped for. Fantastic. I'll show you guys right now.